We're going to begin this lesson with a trip back in time to the 1970s, when men wore flares and women had big hair. Richard Nixon was the President of the United States. There were no cell phones or personal computers, and the VCR hadn't yet been invented. Ethernet, however, had been born, and it wouldn't be long before it started to prove itself as the most popular method of packet switching we'd ever seen. Circuit switching is the term used when two hosts or devices on a network establish a dedicated communications channel or circuit. Once this has been achieved, the hosts are then able to send messages to each other. One example of an early network which used circuit switching was the analog telephone network. In order for a call to be made from one person to another, switches within the telephone exchanges had to create a continuous wire circuit between the telephones, which then had to stay connected for the duration of the call. Circuit switching began to run into reliability problems as we used it more and more. The complete circuit had to stay connected in order for any messages to be transferred. And if any of the equipment in the circuit failed, the connection was dropped and no more information could be sent. A modern day example of circuit switching is an AV matrix. The concept of packet switching was developed to radically alter how messages or data was transferred from one host or device to another across a network. This method ensured reliability across the network as a whole. Rather than send a continuous message over a circuit, which was hopefully permanently connected, packet switching broke the message down into smaller packets of data. These packets were then given sets of rules which allowed any device in the network to work out where they had to get to and how. This method of packet switching allows a network to effectively heal if damaged. How cool is that? Once the packets reached their destination, the receiving host or device was able to put them all together again to form the original message. Immediately, there were huge benefits. Packet switching meant the messages were sent much shorter distances to intermediate hosts, which only needed to follow the rules which were attached to the packet rather than the packet itself. Ethernet played a big part in packet switching by using unique addresses to identify each host on the network. Every single host or device which uses packet switching to communicate uses Ethernet as the medium. And thanks to years and years of continual development, modern devices are extremely effective at using this method. The Ethernet Alliance have already ratified specifications for 400 gigabits per second, with 10 gigabits per second and 25 gigabits per second already commonplace within enterprise and data centers. Bandwidth is cheap and one terabit per second is really not far away. The SDVOE Academy offers a host of short courses designed to give you a broader understanding of Ethernet and how this exciting technology is paving the way for the future. So, back to the present day. If we want unparalleled performance with zero latency, we would plump for a matrix switch solution, and why not? If we want to maybe combine AV with data, or design a solution which may be easily expanded, we would choose an AV over IP solution, even though it might mean applying some compression to the video to make it fit on the network. So what's the problem? The biggest problem we face is that people don't like to change. We can buy a matrix switch and some endpoints, take them out the box and plug them in. And hey presto, it just works, allowing us to get on with the more complicated jobs, like setting up the IP network. AV over IP does require a basic knowledge of networking, but even then we face the dilemma of compromise. If our existing one gig network is already being used for data, then surely by adding video to it, regardless of how much that video is compressed, 
we are compromising the performances of both the video and the data. However, imagine this. We can maintain the latency-free video quality normally only obtained from a matrix switch, leaving the data network unaffected and use Ethernet to drive everything on a single network. Wouldn't that be great? Let's take this one step further. Different manufacturers of network switches also share our vision, making even the most complex layer 3 switches in the galaxy plug and play for video distribution. It's as easy to install one of these devices as it was to install a matrix switch of old. Now that really would be great. SDVOE has allowed this vision to become a reality. Ethernet has grown into an immensely powerful platform, which today controls phone networks, the internet, and consumer products which we can't really live without. Ethernet is tried and tested. It continues to grow, becoming better, faster, and cheaper almost by the day. We can already send a 4K signal with zero loss of quality. Once more, it's cheap, and it's getting cheaper. 10 gigabit network switches for less than $90 per port make the true concept of future readiness affordable. In comparison, to achieve this level of quality with a high-end matrix switch, you'd be paying in excess of $1,000 per port. The reason? It's expensive to develop those things, and Pro-AV manufacturers simply don't get to spread that development cost over hundreds of millions of ports like the Ethernet manufacturers do. As time goes by, video resolution will increase, and thankfully so will network capabilities. As network performances increase, we see the resolutions of 8K and beyond, completely uncompressed, distributed via Ethernet thanks to the evolution of packet switching. Circuit switching simply cannot make that promise. SDVOE is committed to educating everyone on this amazing ecosystem, from basic network terminology to more complex design solutions. The SDVOE Academy is inclusive, not exclusive. The more people understand this game-changing technology and feel comfortable with it, the better video distribution will become. For more information, visit sdvoe.org.